Hello there, today I'll be going over Matryoshka sparse autoencoders, an interesting new variant of SAEs that uses nested loss terms similar to the Matryoshka stacking dolls this variant is named after. This video will assume you have a baseline understanding of SAEs. If you don't, feel free to watch my video on SAEs and then come back to this video when you're ready. Sparse autoencoders apply to language models take input activations from some point in the model, such as its residual stream or a certain MLP block, and transform it into a sparse representation in a high dimensional space. The idea is that these representations, due to their sparsity, can be highly interpretable, allowing us a glimpse into what the model is thinking. However, some issues arise with vanilla sparse autoencoders, stemming from what features actually are, and the sparsity constraint in SAEs. It's easy to think of features as all being equal things. I certainly did at first. The reality is though, features are quite hierarchically connected. For example, the feature for Steph Curry might be a child of the feature for basketball players, and the feature for a soccer ball might be a child of the feature for round objects. This is where the sparsity loss comes in, which is part of the loss that penalizes too many activations. This encourages the SAE to develop sparse representations. Imagine that you're the SAE trying to minimize your sparsity loss and you encounter two features that activate together a lot, such as a Roger Federer feature and a famous sports figures feature. Representing both features would be redundant for your sparsity loss because they both always activate together. So you decide to cheat a little bit by representing a Roger Federer feature and a famous sports figures except for Roger Federer feature. This feature absorption minimizes the sparsity loss because now only one feature is activating instead of both when Roger Federer is in the input. However, this comes at the downside of creating a hole in our abstract feature, the famous sports figures. As we scale SAEs, we observe fragmentation where abstract concepts we want to learn fragment into specific features. For example, our famous sports figures feature could split apart into a Michael Jordan feature, a Serena Williams feature, and a Simone Biles feature, hiding this abstract feature completely. So now we're in a bit of a conundrum. We can either train smaller SAEs that have the upside of capturing abstract concepts better, but have worse reconstruction loss and can't accommodate specific features, or we can train large SAEs that have better reconstruction loss and can learn more niche features, but come at the cost of abstract features developing holes in them. Well, what if we could have the best of both small and large SAEs without introducing the downsides of each? That's where the idea behind Matryoshka SAEs comes in. We can split our SAE into nested groups of varying sizes. For example, let's imagine we have an SAE with 1000 latents. With the Matryoshka SAE, we could split this into groups of the first 250, the first 500, and the first 1000 latents. Each group is like its own mini SAE and has to reconstruct the input with as many latents as it's allocated. The early latents must learn to represent broader, more general features because they can't rely on later latents to handle specific cases. For example, training with just the first 100 latents, the famous sports figures latent has to fire on Steph Curry because there's no specific Steph Curry latent available. Meanwhile, the later latents are free to specialize in more specific features because the earlier latents have the general features covered already. This in theory should reduce feature absorption and fragmentation. Let's look at the results from two blog posts discussing Matryoshka SAEs. We'll start with this blog post by Noah Nabashima. In his setup, he uses a toy model with some independent features and some features that are the children of parent features. On a random batch, this is what the activations look like. On the baseline vanilla SAE, you can see the problem of feature absorption. When the child feature activates, the parent feature doesn't in order to minimize the sparsity loss. However, with the nested SAE, you can see that the parent features activate even when their children are present, and in fact, they activate even a little stronger than the ground truth, displaying the exact opposite pattern of feature absorption. With these cosine similarity graphs, you can see that the nested SAEs much more closely match the ground truth features. However, nested SAEs don't outperform on all metrics. Take a look at this chart showing variance explained on the y-axis compared to the number of latents active on the x-axis for nested SAEs with a dictionary size of 25,000 and vanilla SAEs with varying dictionary sizes. Specifically compare the vanilla SAE and the nested SAE with 25,000 latents. You can see that the nested SAE has a higher loss. This is because as we talked about earlier, feature absorption is a sort of hack for the sparsity loss metric. Because nested SAEs use plus 2L0 instead of plus 1L0, they'll perform worse. Moving on to the second blog post, this time authored by Bart Bussman, 
Patrick Leesk, and Neil Nanda, we also have some beautiful charts to look at. This chart shows how the smallest sub-SAE uses the majority of active latents. Note that the y-axis, in this case, is on a log scale. It also reveals that the sub-SAEs are visually separable if you plot them on a graph like this. This is because the smallest sub-SAE is included in all of the loss terms, while the second smallest sub-SAE in yellow is only included in four, the green is included in three, and so on. This causes them to be visually separable. In this chart, we can see the same effect shown in the previous blog post. Although they use a similar number of active latents, the variance explained is worse for nested SAEs. But just like we saw previously, this metric doesn't capture everything, because we also see that downstream, the cross-entropy loss is actually similar. The authors of this blog post suggest that this is happening because nested SAEs can capture more meaningful and high-quality features useful to the model. Looking for feature absorption and feature splitting or fragmentation, we see that Matryoshka SAEs perform much better than baselines, and importantly do not scale with dictionary size as compared to regular SAEs. This chart shows the results of a technique called meta-SAEs. What to take away from this metric is that a lower amount of variance explained corresponds to more disentangled latents with less information shared between them. Going back to feature fragmentation, if our abstract feature gets divided among many specific latents, these latents become entangled. Because nested SAEs show less feature splitting, it also makes sense that it performs better in this evaluation. This series of charts measures three metrics all related to the quality of the SAE's latents. Starting with the first called sparse probing, the authors took the top K most informative latents and measured how well they functioned as concept probes. There are mixed results until the top 50, in which nested SAEs perform slightly better as probes. The second metric targeted probe perturbation, which looks at the SAE's concept isolation ability. With the nested SAE performing better, it shows that the nested SAE's features are more disentangled and hence can be isolated easier. The third metric is spurious correlation removal, which is how well an SAE can separate correlated features. The results for this are also a little murky, but you can see a pattern in which nested SAE's ability to do this increases with its dictionary size, while the baseline of batch top K does not show the same pattern. This perhaps could be because increasing its dictionary size comes at the cost of more feature absorption, as we saw in previous graphs. Our last metric to look at is the auto-interp score, a metric that tries to determine how interpretable an SAE's latents are, and one that I think personally is very important. Here we can see that later groups of latents of the nested SAEs are learning features that could be harder to interpret. And we're done. This was really fun to make, and I hope you also had fun learning about this too. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And if you found value in this video, liking the video or subscribing to the channel would mean a lot to me. Until I see you next, remember that papers are wonderful.